Salutations, celestial sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes in the Sky. What's up this week? How about Saturn? The planet is at opposition this week, placing it, Earth, and the Sun in a straight line on the 28th at its closest distance to Earth this year. You can find it easily just a few days earlier on April 25th, as the full moon makes that a four-body nearly straight line near Saturn in the sky that night. The fantastic in a scope, sixth planet from the sun and second largest in our solar system, is composed of largely hydrogen and helium. It does have a rocky core estimated in the range of 9 to 22 times the mass of Earth and is about twice its diameter. Despite being 96% hydrogen and 3% helium, most of the clouds we see in the upper atmosphere are ammonia ice crystals. Having a 29 and a half year revolution and a nearly 27 degree axial tilt, Saturn's rings change from thin narrow line about every 15 years to fully wide open. With the last edge on rings view occurring in 2009, Saturn has changed significantly from our perspective in the last four years and getting better with the rings opened up more than 18 degrees presently. And now this week's dark sky fact. Replace typical incandescent post lamp bulbs with silvered ones. Look at the substantial improvement from this one simple change. More info at eyesonthesky.com. Despite the planet itself being smaller than Jupiter, Saturn's rings are clearly seen with as little as 60 times magnification. Let's consider some other easily observed features. Titan is not only Saturn's largest moon, the orange looking one orbiting furthest out from Saturn here, but also the second largest moon in the solar system. Only Jupiter's Ganymede is larger, with Titan about one and a half times the size of our moon. Uniquely, Titan is the only moon with a thick atmosphere and which supports liquid on its surface, largely methane lakes. At magnitude 9, most any telescope can reveal it, though city observers may need 90 to 100 millimeters or more of telescopic aperture. A feature of Saturn's rings is the Cassini division, right here. A visually apparent gap between the A and B rings discovered by Giovanni Cassini in 1675 with just a 64 millimeter objective lens at only 90 times magnification. So can you see it with a scope that small? Important here are steady skies and patience. Remember, clear nights are not necessarily the steady ones. Sometimes a thin haze renders many stars as invisible, but atmospheric steadiness improves. With an increasing ring tilt, look for the Cassini division on nights such as those. As for patients, on less steady nights, the atmosphere can still have moments of good seeing, but often for just a few seconds at a time. Use a motorized drive or slow motion controls to observe the planet over time. Also, Try using an eye patch over your non-observing eye to keep both eyes open, which relaxes facial muscles while viewing. And lastly, look for the subtle shading of cloud bands on Saturn. Unlike Jupiter's obvious equatorial belts, Saturn's cloud tops appear more uniform in color. But with larger telescopes and magnification of 250 or 300 times on steadier nights, shading and color variation can be observed more easily. We don't lose Saturn to evening twilight until early autumn, so you have plenty of time to both observe and share this beautiful celestial sight for much of 2013. Venus is tantalizingly close to popping into view in the evening sky by the weekend, but better and above it is Jupiter sharing some of its last best views this year in the evening hours. That's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller wishing you clear and dark skies.